Welcome to the program. I'm Dr. Neil Barnard, President of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And I'm Jennifer Paul, Registered Dietitian. We're glad you're here. If you have diabetes, prediabetes, a family history of diabetes, or you just want to learn more about how to prevent this disease, manage it, or maybe even make it go away, this is for you. And the good news is there's a lot of power in the food choices that you make. And making good choices is easier than you'd think. In this series, we'll talk about what diabetes is, how foods can improve it, often dramatically. We'll focus on which foods are the best, how to make a diet change easy, and how to get the very best nutrition. We'll also cover day-to-day -day things like grocery shopping and eating at restaurants. You're going to learn a lot, and we're glad you're here. Let's start by making sure we are on the same page about what diabetes is and how it starts, because that will show us how to tackle it. Diabetes means your blood sugar is too high. The sugar we are speaking of is glucose, and glucose is actually a good thing. It powers your muscles so you have strength. It powers your brain so you can think. Glucose is the fuel that powers your whole body. If you eat a banana, a sweet potato, or a piece of bread, the glucose in those foods gets into your bloodstream and passes into the cells of your body to give you power. But this natural sugar, glucose, cannot get into your cells without a key. The key is called insulin, and it is made in your pancreas, an organ right behind your belly button. Insulin goes from your pancreas, through your bloodstream, to your cells, and like a key in a lock, opens up the cell membrane to let the glucose inside. In diabetes, insulin is not working right. In type 1 diabetes, the pancreas is no longer making insulin. In type 2 diabetes, the pancreas is still making insulin, but the cells are not responding to it very well. Let's look at how food choices affect diabetes, starting with type 2. Picture this. What if we eat fatty foods, like fried foods and burgers or cheese? The fat from these foods gets into your cells, and bit by bit, more and more fat particles get inside. As fat particles build up in your cells, the insulin key doesn't work anymore. Your pancreas is still making insulin. It still attaches to the surface of the cell, but it can't seem to open up the cell to let the glucose inside. It's like having your front door locked jammed with chewing gum. Your key won't work anymore, so the glucose can't get into your cells, and it starts to build up in the bloodstream. Doctors call this insulin resistance. Fat from the foods we eat gets inside our cells, and that stops the insulin from working normally. So if blood sugar continues to rise, you can be diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So what if we change our diet and we stop eating fatty foods? Well, this is the good news. The fat inside the cells starts to dissipate. And once the fat leaves the cell, insulin can do its job again. And glucose can enter the cell. The insulin resistance starts to go away, and blood sugar gets better. When scientists discovered that fatty foods can interfere with insulin function, it gave us the answer we needed. If we steer clear of those fatty foods, insulin can start working much better. Diabetes can improve and sometimes even go away. And soon, you'll learn exactly how to do that. Exciting, isn't it? This also means that diabetes is not caused by eating sugar or by eating carbohydrate-rich foods. That is a common misconception that diabetes organizations have been trying to dispel. Type 2 diabetes starts as insulin resistance, and that comes from fat particles building up inside your cells and interfering with insulin's ability to function. In type 1 diabetes, the pancreas is no longer making insulin or is producing almost no insulin, so blood sugar rises. In type 1 diabetes, you will need to inject insulin, and diet changes will not make this condition go away. Even so, Diet changes can help reduce the amount of insulin you need and can also help prevent complications. So, how do we start? The first step is to understand which foods are best for us and which foods slow our progress. That is what we will cover in the next section. 
Once we have nailed that down, we will show you how to test out a diet change that can help enormously. Join us next time for a deep dive into healthy foods. See you soon.